Hey everyone, welcome to another brand new playlist. Uh, this is all about the Tosca interview questions. Now in this particular playlist, I'm going to go through a lot of different real-time interview questions, which you might face uh, in your coming up interviews. Hopefully this should be a gateway uh, to succeed in your upcoming interviews. I would try to cover uh, as many questions as possible. So today um, let's start with uh, the most basic question, uh, which you might face nine out of 10 times in your Tosca interview. And that question is basically about how do you automate your test cases in Tosca? Sounds pretty familiar and pretty basic, right? And uh, you think you can answer this uh, straightforward, but let's look at some other aspects of um, why your answer would not be sufficient when you try to answer this question. Now, there are a lot of different ways to answer this particular question. And one of the simplest answers by an inexperienced candidate could be, um, I just go ahead and scan my application. Um, I use the standard modules uh, and then I create different test steps um, through which I can create the test case in Tosca. Now, that's a perfectly fine answer but it's actually not giving enough confidence to the interviewer whether he should hire you or not based on that particular answer. Now, the reason is um, you are talking about Tosca, but you're not uh, talking about any framework components which you have used while uh, performing the automation in Tosca. Now, remember that the Tosca is built upon two framework components. One is risk-based testing and one is the modular framework. Now, both of these are very important. And whenever you are answering any particular question, uh, not only this question, you should always take care of uh, these two framework components or you should try to structure your answers uh, which uh, revolve around these two different concepts. So let's look um, at what could be a, a better answer to this question and what points you should uh, actually consider while answering this particular question. So these are uh, the five points uh, which I think you should uh, include uh, when you are trying to answer this particular question. So always start uh, with your requirements design um, and structure. So how do you structure your requirement sets? How do you create your requirements? Um, how do you analyze your requirements when it first comes to you from either a product owner or a business analyst? And how do you uh, decide uh, what kind of risk it carries? So it could be in collaboration with your developers or business analyst who could help you uh, to better decide what is the risk factor of a particular requirement. Now, accordingly, you need to also weigh your requirements, right? And that weight could be a simple weight, a relative weight, or you could also use some of the functionality which is provided in Tosca through which you can actually calculate uh, the weight of any particular requirement. So that could be the frequency class or the damage class. So do mention all of these points whenever you are trying to uh, talk about how you prepare or create your requirements, how you uh, put your weight across these requirements. Also I mentioned that um, when we have a risk weightage for each requirement, it helps us to prioritize our testing based on the risk weightage. So uh, the requirements which have got the highest weightage will be prioritized over others. Now, coming to the next point is about modules. So here uh, you can talk about all the standard modules which can be used uh, to automate different types of applications. Also, we can scan um, different applications using the different Tosca engines, which are available. Uh, in some cases or scenarios where uh, we have got um, duplicate controls or we have got controls which have got similar properties and controls which are difficult to identify by Tosca, there uh, will fall back upon uh, mechanisms uh, where there are different identification mechanisms available in Tosca. And then uh, we can also use uh, regex or regular expression uh, in our properties so that we could identify these controls which are not unique. Next, uh, very important talk about the test case designing. 
now how do you design your test cases so you create your test sheets you create your attributes and instances uh, which basically reflect your uh, business objects in your applications and then you use different design techniques uh, in tosca in order to prepare the scenarios or the instances you use uh, either the automated way of uh, creating the instances um, which could be the linear expansion or could be any other technique right also mention about uh, the different options which are available uh, in tosca uh, especially on the test case design section where uh, you can put um, the business relevance of your attributes um, or you could also talk about how you put the character or position of a particular instance so that uh, it can help you uh, basically define the optimum number of test scenarios for your test cases. Also talk about um, how you have created different classes uh, in your test case design where uh, you can reuse your um, test sheet attributes ac across your test sheets. And this uh, helps in uh, increasing the reusability and also reduces the development time. Then uh, we can actually come to the test cases section uh, where we can talk about creating different templates, uh, which consists of all the test steps. And then we uh, link this template to a uh, test design sheet, and then we generate the instances automatically. This helps us to save a lot of time. Also, uh, we can talk about the different test step libraries, which we have created uh, in order to make our test cases more reusable. And also this helps us to uh, create test cases much faster. Finally, we can talk about um, execution and reporting. Now in execution section, uh, we create different execution lists, uh, we create different test mandates and even test events uh, where we can then uh, execute this test events uh, in different uh, machine configurations using uh, the distributed execution environment. And then coming to the reporting section, uh, we can use the different standard reports which are available in Tosca, or we can create our own custom reports. So these are all the different points uh, which you can actually include uh, in your uh, particular answer while you are trying to answer for this question. Try to structure around all these different points um, and prepare your answer. And then um, you can see the difference between um, how an experienced candidate will go around answering this question rather than uh, our first answer, which was like two liner, but uh, it didn't cover much of the things uh, which you can do in Tosca, right? Now, this helps you to showcase your actual real-time experience and skills, which you possess um, on uh, Tosca. And this particular answer could actually uh, impress the interviewer because then uh, he can um, assess your skills in a better way. And the interviewer could also gauge that uh, you have got a lot of uh, real-time experience in Tosca. And also you have the skills to actually excel um, in the team. So hopefully this was helpful um, in making you think um, how you can prepare for your answers for a particular question when you are going for a Tosca interview. I would love to hear your feedback uh, and comments. Uh, do let me know if you have already faced uh, this type of question and if you have a better way of answering this. If you want me to um, answer any particular interview question which you have faced, um, then do let me know in the comments. I will try to include it in uh, my coming up sessions. So, Thank you for listening to me and I will talk to you in my next session.